Will the UK ever be ready for Brexit? I am beginning to doubt it. My name's Mike Cashman. If you find these videos interesting or useful, please subscribe to the channel, invite me to talk, uh, and hey, buy the books. I don't ask you to make a subscription, but if you find what I'm saying interesting, you would love the books, uh, and here's the compendium book of everything together in one big paperback. Uh, and listen to the music, support what we're doing, all the profits from the books and the music all goes to coronavirus charities. So, will the UK ever be ready for Brexit? I doubt it. And before anybody says this is hindsight, then in May 2016, before I wrote the first song in this book, uh, I had put on social media the who knows what the benefits of Brexit might be. Uh, they are turning out to be rather difficult to define even then. But I said what I can tell you with certainty is that the cost and time involved in doing this, uh, this will be longer and more complicated and more expensive than anybody is anticipating at the moment. So when David Frost says this is more complicated than any of us, than anybody thought, he is wrong. Uh, I'll go further with that. Um, so December 2019, uh, 19th of December. I've got a letter in The Guardian which says, having been involved in large-scale logistics projects elsewhere, I don't believe the government has a snowball's chance in hell of completing what it's attempting to do in 2020. Um, I was talking specifically in the context of the Irish border protocol, um, but to be honest, exactly the same rationale applied to other borders. Uh, article in The Independent, um, 13th of September, makes it clear that the border arrangements for the UK are a complete mess. This book, the first song in here is Brexitian Fantasy. Nothing really matters except sovereignty. It's a rip-off of Bohemian Rhapsody, shared hundreds of times on social media. Um, what is clear is that while people are arguing about what exactly Daniel Hannan or Nigel Farage or Michael Gove or any of the others meant in the run-up to the referendum, what's absolutely clear is that they did not have a definition of what Brexit was to be, the Brexit that they were campaigning for. Um, we had the tremendous piece of wisdom from Theresa May defining Brexit when she said Brexit equals Brexit. So I don't think we're any the wiser after that. Um, but the Leaf side were not ready to propose Brexit in 2016. Their taken a back stance the morning of winning the referendum make it, made that clear. And if they'd known what they were doing, then there would have been a credible candidate for Tory leader ready to implement the results of the referendum. Never mind if you criticise David Cameron for running away. Um, uh, you know, where was the Gove Johnson team? They didn't have their act together, quarrelling amongst themselves. Uh, it was a shambles. Um, Boris Johnson came in as Prime Minister when he had the apparently easier task of saying, I won't make as much a mess of it as Theresa May had, has done. Um, you know, it's easy to be the critic. Um, what he actually did was fished out of the waste paper basket a deal which Theresa May had rejected. Um, so there wasn't anything new in that. But if you're negotiating, uh, as Johnson was, and Johnson was busy saying, oven ready deal, I can do all the negotiations necessary for the trade and cooperation agreement in 2020. If you're negotiating, if you are a smaller size, you're at a disadvantage. If you're the less experienced partner, you're at a disadvantage. Uh, the one crucial disadvantage that Boris Johnson added was the time limit. So he imposed a time limit. If you've got a time limit on you in negotiation, uh, you're at a disadvantage. To be fair, the European Union said, no, would you like longer? No, no, 2020 will be enough. 11 months is enough. Uh, are you sure you wouldn't like longer? No, no, it'll be enough. Uh, you've got a pandemic on. Would you like longer? No, no, we'll be ready in time. Uh, 24th of December, there are the details of the deal, ready for implementation on the 31st of December. As I've said elsewhere, absolutely ridiculous to take 235 weeks to define something and then allow one week from clarification as to what the arrangements are for business to implement. Um, so, you know, are you going to be ready? Yes, we're going to be ready. Yes, we're going to be ready. No, of course we're not. And uh, one of the first things uh, negotiated was to postpone uh, incoming checks in the UK um, until April. 
Um, sorry, I don't think it was negotiated. It was just uh, a decision by the UK government. Now, uh, evidence given to Parliament from Jim Harrow, the most senior civil servant in HMRC, said that postponing incoming checks for three months would cost at least £800 million. Pounds. Uh, it's been the postponement has been four times that, which therefore, by pure maths, would suggest that would cost three point two billion pounds, probably more than that, um, uh, on the assumption of higher trade during the summer. Um, so that is already approaching the entire UK aid cut money thrown away by the government um, because it wasn't ready. And this story in the Independent today is a story of a complete shambles. Uh, customs facilities built and then knocked down again. Uh, it is September. They are still looking at uh, possibly buying the land to, that they need to implement customs checks. Look, in project management, uh, everybody with experience knows that if you've got a sensible deadline for a project and then senior management says it has to be done quicker, there are always ways in which it can be done quicker but more foolishly. Um, let's take the analogy of building a house. There's a sensible time scale for that, for um, you know, planning permission, building drawings, uh, actually getting the, um, the foundations laid, uh, walls, roof, fixings and so on. You can cut the time for that if you start to say, well, let's assume that we're going to get planning permission. Uh, let's assume that the drawings will be drawn in the way that we expect. Let's start digging foundations and putting walls up and whatever. Um, but you create chaos. You create the likelihood of needing to do rework. You create an illusion of activity, um, but you don't get the results done. And we're seeing the implications of that now. We're seeing a, a UK which uh, is undertaking a shambolic project in terms of the customs checks. Part of my professional experience um, in the later part of my consultancy career was I was very often called into projects that were going drastically wrong and uh, very often in these cases, there was unfounded optimism. People say, were saying, well, you know, yes, it is costing you um, millions every month. Um, just keep paying the money. We'll get there. The plan will come right. Don't worry. Um, once you got to talk to people and found out the, uh, the real facts of the matter, which they were actually quite happy to tell me, um, and took the situation back to senior management who generally said, oh, thank heavens you've found out what's been going on, Mike. We thought there was something wrong, you know, and you could start from then on this kind of truth and reconciliation basis, you know, all past, um, I won't necessarily say deceits, but all past over optimisms are forgiven. Uh, and let's build a plan based on facts and evidence and what's really possible. Uh, then, you know, you stood a chance of um, making your way forward and there were projects costing hundreds of millions of pounds, which I've helped to set on a better path. That's what this needs. Now, I'm not bidding for the work. I'm, I'm not engaged in uh, that sort of consultancy anymore. Um, but the whole thing is a shambles. Uh, the unrealistic ideas and deceits need to be set aside. Somebody needs to come into that situation and say, uh, what is the current situation? What is actually possible? Because the whole story of Brexit, uh, and you know, you can read aspects of it in parody verse uh, in these books, or all combined together in this. Who would you get this for as a present, by the way? Um, surely there are people who would like a rather unusual present of one of these. But anyway, the the whole story uh, is a story of deceit from then up until now. Um, the empty shelves in supermarkets are caused by a number of factors. Brexit is primary among those. Uh, the government cannot, it can't solve the empty shelves problem if it doesn't admit that Brexit um, uh, is a major cause of the problem. And so if it doesn't admit that, it won't solve the problem. Uh, so anyway, uh, you have to laugh or you cry, um, and uh, that's why these are there. A lot of people have chuckled at them, uh, and all the money that you um, spend on buying any of the books and music, uh, all of the profits, rather, uh, goes to coronavirus charities. The DEC uh, Coronavirus Appeal now 
um, targeted at uh, eight countries uh, with severe coronavirus problems. So have some fun yourself, give a present to your friends, uh, support a political message of exposing lies and hypocrisy um, and moving towards truth and integrity. Uh, enjoy it and raise some money for a good cause. So I am being quite explicit about it. It's time to buy the books and the music. Thank you.